we all love a good scare, right? Actually, not all of us do. Why don't we all enjoy the pulse racing moments of a scary movie? Well, our next guest is here to explain why our brains react in different ways to the same stimulations. Lee Richardson is a licensed professional counselor and founder of the Brain Performance Center. She joins us now on the Quiver River Electric Guest Line. Thank you so much for being with us. Oh, thank you for having me. So I have one kid who loves all things Halloween. I have another that won't even go into a costume store. (laughs) So what makes the difference? Well, you know, it's so interesting because I have twins and I had the exact same experience because a lot of what impacts how we react in those situations is our emotional history with it. You know, if one kid just had really good experiences around Halloween and, and the fun of it, and that's the emotion that the emotional memory captures and then another kid and for me they were together at the same time and the other kid perceived it very differently you know when when you start taking those short breaths and your heart starts beating faster one may find that exciting and the other may find that very fearful and that's a normal reaction when you know the perceived threat is just as real as the actual threat it's difficult too as a parent if you're if you have one kid who loves it and one kid who hates it because you always have to worry that the other one is going to see something they don't want to see as a parent how should you approach it because i know my kids both love horror movies as much as i do and our family movie night would usually be a horror movie and then other parents would say how can you do that to your children i'm like they love it well i think you know giving your children if they love it and you're doing it as a family night. You're doing it in a very nurturing, safe environment. And, you know, somebody asked me the other day, well, what, what's the age that kids should start watching horror movies? And my response was, I don't think there is age. I think a child or a kid has to be comfortable with what they're doing. And if you're 16 and you're not comfortable, then don't do it. What do you do for a child who is seems to be traumatized this time of year like they it's hard to get away from scary things and you know decorations in in stores and in people's yards and how can you help them through that I think the best thing to do is just have conversation with them and just let them know you know it's perfectly okay for you to feel the way that you feel and it's okay for your sibling to feel the way that they feel and talk to them about it and you know how does it make you feel and what bothers you the most? And what can I do to make you more comfortable? Sometimes just giving, letting them feel like they were actually heard will reduce a lot of the fear. I did a little story about uh, one of our famous haunted houses here that is, it's very well done. It's called The Darkness. And I did ask the general manager what he does or what happens when people arrive and they really don't want to go through because we know there's often peer pressure. You show up with a group and there's that one person who really doesn't want to go and is really terrified. Um, So whether it's an adult or a child, you know, should you should you push that person to sort of, you know, just go outside their their safe zone and just enjoy it? Or should you just respect that person's, uh, you know, fear of it? Because maybe they're afraid of it, but they don't really know what they're getting into, so they might enjoy it and not know. Well, I fall, I mean, you can, I can fall on either side of that line, but more on the respectful side, because there's a reason. If somebody doesn't want to do it, there's a, there's a reason. This is a true fact. Every minute, our brain can take in 11 million bits of data. Research says that 40 to 120 can go on a conscious level. The rest goes to the subconscious level. And you don't know what somebody's got going on 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 that subconscious level. So my tendency is to be respectful. If you can get them to laugh about it, have some fun with it, make them feel a little bit more comfortable. But as far as grabbing their hand and saying, we're going, that's not an action that I would do. We're speaking with Lee Richardson, a licensed professional counselor and founder of the Brain Performance Center. I'm curious on the other end of the spectrum. 
Debbie and I were talking off the air about how, you know, when I go through haunted houses, I just laugh, <laughs> you know, because I an, scream my head off yeah, and then I laugh <laughs> as an adult. Like we get it. Are there some people, though, that take it too far, that they get too engrossed in the horror and the gore that can be around this time of year? Well, I think there's extremes associated with every holiday, and I consider Halloween to be a a holiday. And there are some people that as soon as Halloween's over, they're going to start getting their Christmas decorations out. So I think there's extremes around every holiday, and I think that what's driving those streams is, is really what's interesting part about it. The uh, the GM of the darkness, I asked him why he thinks people love to be scared, and he said that for people coming to the darkness, he thinks it is the adrenaline rush. You know, you get that big adrenaline rush, but it's in a safe setting, and then later you can laugh about it. But is it, would that be your assessment of it or what's happening in our brains when we're going through something like that? Well, you do. You know, anytime that autonomic nervous system gets thrown out of balance, those adrenal glands will start kicking out cortisol. And that does, and that is a rush. And a lot of people find that exciting. A lot of people find that very scary. And anybody that's had a, you know, a, um, a minor heart attack or a difficult physical situation is going to react to that differently than someone that hasn't. And again, that plays into, I believe that the body keeps score of everything that's going on in the brain. So how your body reacts to what's going on in your brain is what's going to determine, are you obsessed with it? Are you mildly interested in it? Do you tolerate it? There's all kind of, there's an extreme of emotion associated with all of our holidays. Is there a difference between the experience, you know, for the brain of seeing a movie versus actually being immersed in a haunted house? Well, it's interesting because research shows that the perceived threat is just as alarming to the body as an actual threat. And to me, a movie is more of a perceived threat. They're making me think that something's going to happen. And whereas if I'm in a real situation, then I can see that something's going to happen. And a lot of times we assume, you know, and people will build on the natural assumptions that they think will make. And sometimes we'll open that door for, for emotions to come out that may or may not even have been the intent. I think there's a lot, I know a lot of people that think Halloween is one of the best, the best days of the year because it's so much fun. And I know people that turn their lights off. Maybe they'll put a big bowl of candy out on the porch. Maybe they won't. But they would just as soon skip it. Real quick before we have to let you go, we talked a lot about kids and their reactions to this. But is it possible for adults, maybe if they go through some sort of traumatic experience, that maybe now they're rewired and they're very fearful of things like this? Absolutely. Emotional trauma puts the brain in a dysregulated state. And emotional trauma sounds so intense, but it can just be something really scary. You saw when you were seven years old, and you still have that visualization going in your brain. Well, Lee, thank you so much. We really appreciate uh, your time and your insight on this. Thank you for having me. That is Lee Richardson, a licensed professional counselor, founder of the Brain Performance Center, joining us this morning.